chance of my finding sperm in the ejaculate relates to patient okay. and it relates to what type of reconnection I do. So if people go online, what they're going to see a lot of discussion about is vas to vas versus vas to epididymis. So there's a testicle, there's a testicle with sperm into the epididymis, uh -huh. which then connects to the convoluted vas, which is this curly structure, which then becomes the straight vas. So the straight vas is what we operate on for vasectomy, remove a small piece of it uh -huh. during vasectomy. So the first thing we do in reversal is we cut right below that vasectomy, and we look at fluid that comes out that testicular end of the vas. We'll take some of that fluid, put it in a microscope slide. What we want to see is sperm. Because if we see sperm, we pump our fist, we go, yes, we can do a vasovasostomy, a vas-to-vas -vas reconnection. So why do we pump our fist and go, yes? Because we have a much higher chance of finding sperm in the ejaculate if we can do a vas-to-vas -vas connection. Okay. So in my experience, it's overnight, it's 95% about to get sperm in the ejaculate after a vas-to-vas -vas reconnection. Let me see my fingers. So, <laughs> Um, if it's been a long time since the reversal, there can be back pressure building up along the testicular end of the vas into the epididymis, and one of those tubules in the epididymis can block itself off. Okay. Well, if you're blocked up in the epididymis, that connects your vas to vas, and it didn't do you any favors because you're blocked at the epididymis. We have to connect the vas above that epididymal blockage, a vas to epididymis connection. Okay. So, um, just to give you an idea, I don't have, I don't have a pen on me, but if you look at the ballpoint in the ballpoint pen, mm -hmm. that's probably close to uh, the lumen of the vas. It's really tiny. Okay. Um, so if we're connecting it to an epididymal tubule, those tubules could be one-fifth the size of the vas lumen. So it's a much so more... So you have a bigger tube connecting to a smaller right, it's tube. It's a much more difficult reconnection to do. Uh-huh, okay. Um, and the success rates are lower. Okay. So in my, in my series, it's about 60 or 65% of the time we get sperm into the ejaculate for the vast epididymis connection. And, and you don't find that out until you're in there? Correct, we don't so know. You start the procedure and you'll test and you'll look at the sperm and then you'll see what, how, what kind of thing you're gonna be doing. So if, the, if it's been a long time since the vasectomy, mm -hmm. it's much more likely that you're gonna do vast epididymis than if it's been a short time. Mm -hmm. So we just had a lecture on this today. Once you get past two years after the vasectomy, we can't say whether it's we can do epididymis to vas or vas to vas. At three years after vasectomy, it's still much more likely vas to vas, and every year that goes thereafter, that vas to vas versus vas to epididymis ratio changes more and more vas to epididymis with every year that passes. I see, so and what's kind of the end point where it's, you know, is it 10 it's years? Yeah. So we hit somewhere between 10 and 20 years, sort of plat plateau that number, uh -huh. and at that time it's about 50-50.